Hi, in the last video I showed you the customized diffuser tags and the diffuser itself. So in this video I'd like to discuss about the families involved in the creation. So the first diffuser you see here, it, this is a rectangular neck size type of connector and uh, we also do have the round type connectors and uh, how do we change those connectors is by clicking on the on the duct connectors and then if you go to the parameters you could see the properties here shape rectangular you can change it to round or rectangular or oval so in this particular instant it is a rectangular type so let's try to change it to round and see what happens. And hit apply, see it becomes a round. And then you can go back and change it to rectangular again. So this is where the duct connectors get their shapes. You can have the options of choosing three different types. The second thing that I want to talk about is how do you tie up the parameters with the model? Again for the duct connector model, you click the connector and then if you go to <coughs> if you go to the radius, <coughs> oh this is a rectangular type, so you gotta go to the height and width parameters. So if you click in there, you could see those there's a <coughs> height and width type of parameters that have been customized by me and it comes up here. So this is how you associate the parameters with the dimensions inside the models. And these parameters reside <coughs> in these blue family type boxes. If you click there, you can add any parameter that you want and after you add the parameters, then they stay in the database then you come back to the model and then link the particular dimension to this parameters that you created. So for instance the duct width and the height parameters were being connected to the dimension type parameters that I've created. So we can go ahead and create another parameter if you want to add you just click on the add and here you got to be a little bit careful as to choose the type and instance parameters if a project is a global type parameter then you just leave it at the type and if it's an instance you go to the instance now what I've created is I've created a shared parameter this means that anything that you create can be brought into a schedule so the the um, shared parameter resides in a text file and my text file is inside my C Revit practice folders and you can create wherever you want to have those shared parameter text files it's nothing difficult you just have to give a name and it automatically makes a text file out of it and then you add new parameters to that text file for instance if you want to give um, say you want to give something like a, a length dimension that you want to control you can do it by giving your own name for instance you can say whatever it is and you give the length then if you want to control a certain specific component in the HVAC category you put a HVAC and then you can control the airflow or the pressure temperature power density whatever um, most of these we don't really use the most we use is airflow duct size uh, airflow yeah pretty much those are the things that we use for the diffuser um, related uh, things that we do so anyway that was just to show you where they reside and we don't worry about the piping electrical or structural we'll focus more on to the common type parameters which are these and uh, on the HVAC part you can do the duct size or airflow 
whatever you'd like to customize. The other thing that I wanted to sh share with you is on the common discipline there is a parameter here called S, uh, S and now this parameter is uh, is a checkbox type like if you want the diffuser to say this is a lay-in type or a, um, a surface mount type you can add the parameter here and assign this value the S or no type value and then it automatically comes with check boxes <coughs> So this is kind of an advanced lesson, but once you s do one model or uh, control one parameter, then you'll be very familiar with it. It's just a matter of practice. Uh, so here I've created a list of parameters just for our client. And that's how you bring in. And after you bring in, you just link the, you just link the parameter to the dimensions. So uh, let me click on this one. Um, then you go to the label here's where you assign the parameters we created to whatever you'd like to do the reason why I created the A dimension is I want this A dimension to show up on my schedule so I, rel I link the label to this particular dimension now you have an option you see a lock box in here lock padlock you can lock the box that means this dimension will not be changed and if it changes there will be a restraints on it um, for right now I want it to be floating so we have an option to change the dimensions if we want to but for now the default value is going to be 18 inches 1 foot and 6 inches is 80, yeah, 18 inches um, so that's about the parameters and the model themselves I've created another model with a round type which I would like to show. Um, this is the round type model. Um, and in the round type model, there's we can create new types of families ranging from 6 through 10. And this is the same thing I've done for the rectangular, changing from 6 by 6 up to 16 by 16. So once you create one then you just have to say new and then new and then type in the name that you would like to identify it and then uh, let's move on to how we can assign a label or assign a tag so that it picks the value from the model and then displays so that's the next one I would like to discuss now this is a diffuser tag that I've created these lines and circles are pretty easy they just are lines or circles that you create inside Revit but here these are called labels where they are intelligent enough to be linked up with a parameter so for instance this label here if you go to edit label this is where all the parameters come up and you see I've linked it with flow this CFM is linked with the flow. You can get it back, and if you if you get it back and say, this is how it, you know, <coughs> you can. So it's not allowing me to delete it, but uh, this is where you start to add more stuff into it. Uh, so let's do the next one. See this tag here this tag is MDA standard type and this is where you have it you can remember the parameters that I showed you earlier on you can bring those parameters by clicking them into this category parameters and then you can start to add to that label so for the duck size again it's the same thing um, it's edit label and uh, you see the duck size MDA standard next size see this is the parameters that I've created then you can link that up here this is a special tag that I've created for the round type next size there's another tag I've created for square type tag square type uh, neck diffusers see here this is square type and uh, 
if you go to edit label you can see that one dimension is your width another dimension is your height um, the X mark you can add it to the suffix in here so the first value is your width and then the second value is your height so all we are interested in is to bring the next sizes to display in our tag so this is how you link the models that you created and the parameters you created and uh, put it into the tag now you might be wondering why there is a straight line in here and it this did not appear in our model the main reason is our arrows when they are connecting to our end, end point here they usually don't really line up so we have to trick Revit to get the end point right so usually what Revit does is picks up the midpoint from the top to bottom so that's why I've drawn this line and I've made this line invisible see it's invisible in here and this line you can draw and adjust so that your leaders come and join at this particular point it's kind of a trial and error but uh, this is how it, it can be done so I'll show you see what I'm talking about it's right here you see this they perfectly come and join together if you just don't draw the vertical line that I showed you earlier on then uh, the connection point is it, it may sway stand up or down and it drives crazy so that's one another tip that I picked up online and uh, implemented it anyway if you have any questions or Revit based project consulting I'm happy to assist you and my number is area code 512-299-6748 or you can skype me at RASA2722 for any of your Revit consulting. I'm happy to assist you. Thank you.